Hello, this is Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech number 334 with a little bit of spoiler here and a top 10 list for EDH. These are the top 10 three casting cost artifacts for Commander. Reason I'm doing this list today is because of the Trophy Mage. The Trophy Mage now creates this trinity of awesome mages in blue that allow you to search up incredible artifacts. Trinket Mage is one of my go-to cards in almost every blue EDH deck. Let you go grab Soul Ring and Sensei's Divining Top. Treasure Mage is a great way to go get things like Worm Coil Engine. And Trophy Mage may even be better than Treasure Mage and possibly as good as Trinket Mage. There are so many incredible cards at the three casting cost area for Commander. Some honorable mentions here, Chief of the Foundry, nice little plus one, plus one to all other artifacts, Sands of Delirium, great mill card out there, and Thousand Year Elixir lets you do some crazy stuff with some of the other cards on this list, or just make your creatures that much faster for their activated abilities. Number 10 spot here, I've got one of the meanest cards on the list, Trinisphere. It doesn't hurt the really fair, slower decks, but it crushes those Cantrip and Storm decks. Dark Ritual and Ponder just look silly at three casting costs. This is one of the most powerful cards ever printed. Chromatic Lantern, and there were a lot of options to put in this spot, so with all of my lists, I usually have more like 20 cards instead of 10. There's honorable mentions here too. Coalition Relic, Basalt Monolith, and even Worn Power Stone, which gets overlooked. It's the little brother to Soul Ring and is still very, very good at three casting costs. Chromatic Lantern, though, is one of the absolute best, especially if you don't want to spend a huge amount of money on land. This is a wonderful way to mana fix. Coalition Relic is a little bit faster and a little bit more spiky. Both are great cards. The number eight spot here, I've got one of the absolute meanest cards in Commander, Static Orb. This is a for the spiky players out there. As long as Static Orb is untapped, players can't untap more than two permanents during their untap step. This feels like one of those old school continuous artifacts that got updated to have, turn off when you tap it. It really shuts games down. This is a way to lose friends at Commander, but win some competitive games. The number seven spot here, I've got Sculpting Steel with an honorable mention to Miziums. I can't pronounce the end of that. Both of these are great cards, wonderful ways to copy everything else on the list or a Worm Coil Engine. The number six spot here, we've got a card that I was a little sad to actually see it unbanned. It's a crazy combo piece. It is incredibly powerful and an honorable mention here to Metal Worker. Both of these cards just do really crazy things. Staff of Domination is on that combo side, but it also has a lot of utility. It can be in a fair deck and Metal Worker is broken fast and combos well with other cards. In the number five spot here, I've got the last of the super spiky cards on the list. Don't get me wrong, there are some very powerful cards still coming up, but this one allows you to just shut people down really, really early, especially if you've got some way to uh, recur it, put counters back on it. Tangle Wire just shuts the early turns down in your opponent's deck. Number four spot here, I've got one of those over-the-top crazy fun cards, which can combo, but I often see it just doing fun things in decks. It's Rings of Brightheart. Anytime you have an activated ability that isn't a mana ability, for two mana you can copy it. Really, really nice effect. This goes in lots of different decks. Mimic Vat and Thawing Glaciers are two of my absolute favorite effects to copy. Number three spot here, I've got Ensnaring Bridge. This is definitely a modern powerhouse. It also works really well, though, with kind of a hellbent uh, setup so that you're pulling these cards off the top of your deck that are much more powerful with no cards in hand. I also really like it with Null Brooch, the ability to just discard your hand to counter a spell and then stop everyone from attacking anyone. Number two spot here is Crucible of Worlds and that beautiful new artwork that is out there in the Masterpiece series. The original artwork is also just incredible on this. 
The ability to reuse your fetch lands is really nice. Strip mine can lock people entirely out of the game. Thawing Glaciers gives you an easy way to prevent all damage that would be dealt to you. This card combos with so many cards. It's a player favorite and a wonderful, wonderful card. Number two spot here, I've got the swords. All of the swords. I mean, the swords could have been half of this list. It's difficult to decide which ones to put into EDH decks. They all have some really nice utility. Even War and Peace, which is undervalued, the life on it is well worth it, and punishing a player who just drew 10 or 20 cards and has a Reliquary Tower in play is just too much fun. I think the most powerful ones, though, are definitely Feast and Famine because of the ramp ability and Sword of Fire and Ice, but each one of these has wonderful build around strategies. People also ask me which versions they should be picking up of these. I am a big fan of the Chris Ron artwork, but the masterpieces are also incredible. I mean, it really depends on the look of the rest of your deck. So for Sword of Fire and Ice, that Modern Masters Chris Ron is just beautiful. For Sword of Light and Shadow, my favorite, though, is the Masterpiece Edition. That is just beautiful artwork. There's so many good options with these swords out there for versions to pick up. You can put wonderful versions in your EDH decks. Uh, what top 10 list would you like to see next? To untangle deck construction and find the best cards for Commander, subscribe to the channel. Thank you to everybody who's over there supporting the channel on Patreon. Um, I'm meaning to have some pack openings hopefully this week. I'm going to be moving here in about a week and a half, so the channel may be down for a few days there uh, while I am moving. I'm staying here in the Seattle area, and I will definitely let you guys know um, as soon as that move is done.